Welcome to Phenomenon Radio, the show that covers thought-provoking breakthroughs in the fields of UAP UFOs to discover fascinating truths, first-hand accounts, and investigative insights into the expanding confluence of physical and mental exposure to this worldwide phenomenon. Hosted by Emmy award-winning investigative journalists, Earth Files reporter and editor, Linda Moulton Howe and world-renowned experiencer of the 1980 Rendlesham Bentwaters incident, John Burroughs. And now, leading off tonight's program, here's Linda Moulton Howe. Saturday, December 16, 2017, was an historic day and night in the annals of the U.S. government's 70 years of covering up the alien presence behind UFOs with strict policies of denials ordered in 1947 by President Harry S. Truman, allegedly in the interest of national security. This new crack in official U.S. government policies of lies and denials began on Saturday with the New York Times headline article, quote, Glowing Auras and Black Money, the Pentagon's Mysterious UFO Program, close quote. That report contained two embedded infrared videos of UFOs from the Defense Department's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. That agency was unknown to most everyone until December 16, 2017. The New York Times reported that the DOD's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program was brought secretly into being by retired Nevada Democrat Harry Reid, who was the U.S. Senate Majority Leader in 2007. That's when he got $22 million allocated over five years to the Department Defense Department's budget to create and operate the DOD program to study the extraordinary technologies moving in Earth skies and seen by hundreds of military pilots. The UFO craft in military videos accelerate like nothing ever seen before and travel at astoundingly fast speeds, stop mid-air, do 90-degree angle turns, brighten and dim, and seem to expand in size, and then disappear. The Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, according to the New York Times, was based in the fifth floor of the Pentagon C-Ring in an office directed by a senior covert intelligence officer who had long worked for the CIA named Louis Elizondo. He resigned his DOD position on October 10th, 2017, and the next day on October 11th, he appeared with Tom DeLong on the Facebook live stream to the STARS event. Tom DeLong is founder and CEO of this To The Stars, along with his co-founder and president, Jim Semivan, who retired from 25 years as an operations officer both overseas and domestically for this central intelligence agency. Others who have joined DeLong, Elizondo, and Semivan are Chris Mellon, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, Steve Justice, former Advanced Systems Director for Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works, and Dr. Hal Putoff, Director of Various Scientific Research Programs for DOD, the CIA, and DIA, and NSA. Dr. Putoff also is Director of the Institute for Advanced Studies in Austin, Texas. Strangely, the Pentagon says that this program was shut down in 2012, five years after it received that initial $22 million funding after Nevada Senator Harry Reid's efforts. But other sources told the New York Times that, in fact, the UFO program has continued, quote, to investigate episodes with UFOs brought to the Pentagon by service members while also carrying out their other Defense Department duties, close quote. Retired Senator Harry Reid told the New York Times, quote, I'm not embarrassed or ashamed or sorry I got this thing going. 
I think it's one of the good things I did in my congressional service. I've done something that no one has done before, close quote. The New York Times article says that most of the $22 million allocated for the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program went to Bigelow Aerospace in Las Vegas. Robert Bigelow, who is the owner of Bigelow Aerospace, appeared in CBS's 60 Minutes on May 28, 2017, and said these words, quote, I am absolutely convinced that aliens exist. And the alien presence is just like right under people's noses, close quote. And apparently, Mr. Bigelow meant there is an alien intelligence interacting with Earth in the air, below land, below water, and below ice. George Knapp, Emmy and Peabody Award-winning investigative reporter at KLAS-TV in Las Vegas, Nevada, has known and worked with Robert Bigelow for several years, as well as Tom DeLong. And after this short break, George Knapp will join us on Phenomenon Radio for the latest updates about what has happened since that Saturday, December 16, 2017, when the New York Times headlined, Glowing Auras and Black Money, the Pentagon's Mysterious UFO Program. You're listening to Phenomenon Radio Live exclusively on KGRARadio.com. Thank you all for joining us tonight for this very special final broadcast of the Phenomenon Radio program for 2017. Tonight's very special guest of KLAS Channel 8 in Las Vegas, investigative journalist George Knapp will join the show right after this short break. This is AJ with Vibes Mind Body Spirit. The hustle and bustle of the holidays are fast approaching, and the Vibes Tribe is ready to assist you in making your holidays merry and bright. Illuminate your space by shopping onlinevibes.com and browse our wide selection of handmade soy based candles infused with crystals and essential oils. You can prep and clear your space before and after family festivities with sage, palo santo, and our own in-house incense resin blend. From now through January 1st, use the promo code GIFT at checkout and then receive 25% off any online purchase. Beat that rush and shop onlinevibes.com and stuff your stockings with thoughtful gifts for all of your loved ones to make this holiday season the most meaningful one yet. Visit onlinevibes.com. That's onlinevibez.com today. For years, the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station has been your contact for live UFO paranormal talk radio worldwide, bringing you the top names in research and investigations seven nights a week. Our listeners connect to the KGRA on various platforms like TalkStream Live, TuneIn, Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and many more. Now, you can stream your favorite paranormal talk radio shows with our new fully integrated custom KGRA mobile apps for Android and iPhones. Listen to your favorite paranormal talk shows from any mobile device 24-7 free with smartphone or tablet. Utilize custom features to access news, show pages, archives, contests, events, and live interactive chat room. Set, set show notification alerts and never miss your favorite live programs. All free and available to download in Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Your official contact for the best alternative talk on the planet. KGRARadio.com
Thanks for staying with us right here on Phenomenon Radio Live exclusively on KGRARadio.com. The very first hour tonight is dedicated to KLAS Channel 8 Las Vegas investigative journalist George Knapp. He's on deck and ready to go. Here's Linda Moulton Howe to start the show. George Knapp, welcome to Phenomena Radio. It's a pleasure to have you back at this time in which Saturday, December 16th, 2017, was an historic day and night in the annals of the U.S. government's 70 years of covering up the alien presence behind UFOs with strict policies of denial. And you and I and others have been waiting a long time for something that would be official from the Department of Defense Could you start today on Phenomena Radio with your own insights about the importance of what happened on Saturday, December 16th? Well, I think it's huge. Uh, It feels like we've turned a corner. And and the main difference is mainstream media being willing to give this subject a fair shake. Uh, You know, the, the story has been there for the taking for a long time, if anyone wanted to look at it. But, of course, it was easier to ignore it or make fun of it and denigrate those who are involved in it um, than it was to actually do the work and dig into it. But lo and behold, when the New York Times finally decides to go ahead and dig into it, uh, they find that it's a legitimate story. And that sort of started a tsunami of coverage that I hope is the start of a trend that that lasts. I I, I worry that uh, American news media is sort of like American news consumers, that the uh, attention span is that, uh, comparable to that of a gnat, and 30 seconds from now they'll want to move on to something else. I hope that's not the case. I am told that the New York Times is working on other stories. There are a lot of other interviews they did that they have not used yet and that they will be pursuing it further. I, that sets a template for the other uh, news media. Let's um, – Others know that if the New York Times can cover it, that it's acceptable for them to cover it as well. They don't have to worry about being slammed as being wackos. Uh, Linda, you and I can relate to that a little bit, uh, <laughs> That <laughs> how that works. So I, I'm very hopeful that it, um, that it leads to ongoing coverage by uh, major media and that it lets uh, elected officials and government officials know that it's okay to discuss this in in open. Uh, you know, Harry Reid, I guess we're going to talk about the Harry Reid interview that I've done this week. Harry Reid said that he had, uh, I haven't put this on the air yet, but he was buried with calls from colleagues on Capitol Hill. He's retired now, but he still has a lot of friends there. And they were calling him saying, we had no idea you were interested in this. I've been interested in it my whole life. That's the kind of story comments that he gets. And uh, there is actual discussion about the a possibility of having some hearings into a very narrow sort of a range of uh, UFO related issues uh, with very practical considerations, the same kind of things that this Pentagon study was focused on. That's incredibly encouraging. I'm hoping that it lasts. I'm crossing my fingers. I just don't know where it's going to go. But George, you and I and John and others, we know that behind all of this has been counterintelligence policies to make sure that the public and the media would stay away from the UFO phenomena since World War II, first declared by Harry S. Truman saying that at all costs, the public and the media must be removed and held off from knowing anything about what they were secretly investigating at crash sites of what were in their own documents referred to as celestial or sometimes extraterrestrial or other types of a craft and bodies, and that we know for 70 years that has been the biggest secret with the biggest black budget money. And that comes to Louis Elizondo. He comes out of senior intelligence for the Central Intelligence Agency, and the New York Times reported that he was the director of the Pentagon uh, in the fifth floor of the Pentagon C-Ring. He was the director and head of this agency that has this remarkable title that none of us that I know had ever heard before Saturday, December 16th. And it is, he has been heading the Defense Department's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Now, if Harry Reid 
is the senator who was responsible for getting uh, the $22 million authorized, and that this goes back to 2007, I believe. And the New York Times seems to have accepted that this project closed in 2012. And yet, in their own writing, in Ralph Blumenthal's writing, it says, but there appears to be information that it is still secretly ongoing. Can you share with us what you know about the relationship of Louis Elizondo to Tom DeLong and his group to the stars that he first introduced uh, Louis Elizondo on October 11th, the day after Louis Elizondo officially left the Pentagon to join the Tom DeLong effort. It's complex and multi-layered, but maybe you can sort this more out for us. Well, as, as we know uh, from covering the t subject for a long time, uh, the Air Force had said in 1969, we're not collecting UFO information anymore because it, it has no implications for national security. We're done. No one believed that. Right. Of course, no one believed that. And of course, they've continued to collect information. The Bolander memo that says any cases involving national security will continue to be collected. And of course they are. A, a pilots encounter some strange craft or um, UFOs appear over nuclear missile bases and knock out the communication system. Of course, those kinds of reports are going to be made. The, uh, the Nimitz incident that happened, there was, a, there was an investigation by the Navy, two of them actually, uh, that w that went up the chain of command. That report got stuck in the drawer of an admiral who commanded that that battleship group. I mean that carrier group. He stuck it in a drawer because he didn't want it to uh, affect the, his deployment to the Persian Gulf. Uh, so there is information that continues to be collected. The difference here is that, that it's collected and stashed all over the place. There was no central analysis or communication. Harry Reid has an, had an interest in the topic for as long as I have. He is the first person I told about Area 51 and Bob Lazar outside of our newsroom. I went and had a meeting with him in 1989 before those stories hit the air. And he didn't kick me out of the car. It was We were in a, a limousine on the way to the airport. He was flying to, to Washington. He didn't kick me out. It, it sparked an interest that continued from that day. In the mid-90s, when Bob Bigelow established NIDS, the National Institute for Discovery Science, he had this world-class um, group of experts that would meet every few months, uh, kick around these topics. They had a rapid deployment team that would go to the scene of animal mutilations and UFO incidents. I told Reed about it. He had heard about Bob Bigelow. He even represented Bob Bigelow in a case when he was a, a young man. I told him about the NIDS meetings, and he started going over there. And, and he, he would encounter ex-astronauts, CIA analysts, uh, US, another U.S. senator in these meetings, and he was kind of hooked as he's trying to um, figure out what was going on in government, he would from time to time share with me information. And then when I would interview him over the years about other subjects, he and I would go off to the side and we'd have these huddled conversations and his staff members would wonder, what the hell are they talking about? Uh, so I, I, I guess what I'm leading up to is that Reed has always had an interest in it. Someone from DIA approached him in 2007 and said, look, here's the evidence this is really serious. Somebody needs to have an organized program uh, in collecting this and, and analyzing the information. So Reed went to two of his fellow senators, Ted Stevens and Daniel Inouye. They had a meeting in the Capitol in a secure room in a skiff. Reed made the pitch. Those two guys uh, did, didn't take two seconds for them to agree that the, this should be studied. So they quietly authorized the, the, the funding. They put, it out, put out the contract to bid. Bigelow Aerospace is the one that got it for some reasons that we can go into, for some obvious reasons. They'd already been doing this kind of work uh, before uh, under the guise of NIDS. You know, once the contract was awarded, uh, it went to this new company called Bass. John and I um, can talk about public statements that Bob Bigelow made. It, it should have been obvious what was going on to anybody who was paying attention, that there was a legitimate study underway, and yet it took all this time, almost 10 years, for the news to actually break. Luis Elizondo you'll recall from recent interviews, said he'd been doing this for 10 years. So that's the time frame is right. He started in 2007. 
Uh, he was interfacing with Bass and these various military agencies, collecting information, UFO incidents, videos, all that stuff, and then it would be sent to Las Vegas where this team of experts would be analyzing it, trying to figure it out. They had a very specific uh, list of criteria that was spelled out in the contract of what they were trying to accomplish. They looked at databases from other countries, from um, other researchers, uh, from all over the world, and uh, try to make sense of all this and try to figure out what was going on for very specific reasons, to try to figure out how this technology works and ultimately whose technology it was. Uh, it, I think Luis Elizondo, after the program uh, was canceled in 2012, I, I think that the information continued to come into him, but he had nowhere to send it, nothing to do with it, and he became increasingly frustrated. In particular, and this is not aired yet uh, that I know of, he was alarmed because the uh, increasing frequency of these kind of encounters, that Tic Tac incident that we're all familiar with now with the Nimitz in 2004, was not isolated. Uh, it was the beginning of a series of events of encounters that have not been made public yet between our military and these, these unknown aircraft, both on the West Coast and the East Coast. And the, the increasing frequency sort of was what pushed uh, Luis over the, Lou over the edge and then Tom DeLong established his organization. It gave Lou a place to go. I think that when he appeared on that stage in October uh, with Tom and the other members of the To The Stars team, it was shocking to his colleagues in the Pentagon. But it's, it was the beginning of the end of, uh, of the, uh, the uh, unfair treatment of the UFO topic because – Lou Elizondo's credentials are impeccable. He's a serious guy. I was sitting with Lou Elizondo and Tom DeLong and Bob Bigelow at a dinner here in Las Vegas three days after the announcement was made, and he was sharing with me both the, uh, the, the videos that are now, have now been made public uh, as well as his resignation letter written to his friend, Secretary of Defense James Mattis. This guy is not only a friend of his. Mattis saved his life. Mattis saved Lou Elizondo's life in Afghanistan, and he told me the story about it, about the special bond between them. But he had written this letter, this very impassioned letter, which explained, look, I'm stepping down uh, because this topic is real, it's serious, and we're not giving it the kind of attention that it needs, and I have an opportunity to go somewhere where I can uh, focus my energies in trying to get to the bottom of it. He didn't know at the time whether uh, Secretary Mattis had seen the letter, and, the, and I now know that, in fact, he did not see it. He didn't see it until the night before the uh, New York Times broke its story. But Elizondo and Tom were sitting there telling us about the, the plans and what they had in mind, and they both got a text at the same time from the New York Times saying they had received the resignation letter and they were interested in pursuing the story. So that was kind of a momentous uh, occasion, and it's something I'll never forget uh, because it was the beginning of the end for UFO secrecy, I think. There's still a lot of secrets that have not been unveiled, and I don't think there's anything like disclosure coming. But as John and I have talked about before, confirmation may be more important than disclosure, and that's what I think just happened. And, George, do I understand that you're saying that – uh, Luis Elizondo and Mattis and all, that that letter of resignation literally was just the day before the October 11th to the Stars live stream, and that the New York Times had not been working on this prior to October 11th time period? I, I can't say for sure that the New York Times had not been working on it before, but I know that the letter from Luis Elizondo to his boss res resigning is what hooked him for sure in going forward with the story because I was sitting there when they got when they sent the message. And um, I, I suspect that, uh, you know, Leslie Kane, Kane, who is working with the New York Times, has been involved in this stuff for a long time. I suspect that she has pitched these kind of stories to the Times uh, more than once over the years. This single event where he resigns and goes to work for Tom DeLong for the reasons that were stated is, I think, what kicked off this investigation. And, and it's gone back and forth. Um, you know, Tom DeLong would put out statements, hey, it's coming any day now. Any day now we're going to release this. And then he had to walk it back. And, uh, and he's caught all kinds of grief be be over this. But the reason he had to walk it back is because the timetable was not his. It was he was waiting for The New York Times. 
and then other media sort of were sniffing around the same story. So he's waiting for the Times to break it, figuring uh, they will set the stage. They will make it acceptable for other media to cover it, which is, by the way, why I didn't break the story, because I, I mean, I, I've known about the, the, the DIA study, the Bass effort, since it started and, um, and, and was sort of allowed to be a fly on the wall from the beginning, so long as I didn't report it. And I always figured the day will come when I can report it. And I was ready to go with the story before the Times, but there was a general consensus that I, I obviously am not the New York Times, and a story from me, a UFO guy, would not have the same impact, so I uh, deferred. George, I, I've got a question for you uh, going more into the New York Times article. In that article, and there's been a lot of speculation on, on the net, and, you know, and even a little bit in the shows, but they haven't asked the right question yet, what about the part they talked about uncovering metal alloys. They're storing them in a facility in the Las Vegas area, and they've been doing studies on some of the people that have had interactions. Are the studies that are being done on the people, military personnel, and is there really a facility? Where did that story come from? And do they hold pieces of uh, UFOs? Well, um, you're, you're not going to find anyone. I was really surprised to see that in there. Um, in that, so in that article. You're not really going to get anybody to speak about that on the record. Uh, not now, anyway. Uh, there are special facilities that were built uh, within Bigelow Aerospace here in, in uh, it's the facilities that actually in North Las Vegas. That was part of the contract, that, which specified you have to meet certain standards where top secret research uh, could take place. So it's like a, a skiff, like a soundproof rooms where radio can't get through and they're secure facilities where you could uh, have conversations and not worry about adversaries picking it up or information leaking out. Uh, among those facilities uh, was something, was a storage uh, facility where exotic materials, I am told, are stored. I, I don't know what those materials are, or at least I can't, I, I can't really get into it. Um, I, well, and, can and, I ask and, you and, one question and, though? Yeah, Tom DeLong yeah. has come out and talked about bismuth. What do you know about that? The bismuth magnesium. Well, that's, that's that combination of business ma bismuth magnesium has been kicked around for a long time, uh, as Linda knows. Um, yeah, I, that, I've heard that uh, before, but I don't know for sure that that's the material that's inside uh, the facility here. Uh, I, I know that there are other places that have exotic materials uh, that have been recovered and analyzed. But again, I don't think you're going to get anybody to go on the record. That's probably the most sensitive part of this whole thing. So I am I am willing to be patient on that. I will tell you this. You asked about the, the human effects. There have been ongoing studies uh, by some really capable professionals, uh, not just about effects on military personnel, but a, a broader audience, uh, a broader spectrum of people who've had uh, encounters with uh, strange things and have had subsequent medical effects, psychological effects and, and physical effects that have been analyzed by top-notch people. There is a pattern that emerges in the data that is very disturbing. And, um, I, you know, I, I do not have that material in front of me. I'm, I'm not privy to any kind of uh, printed materials or reports that have been written about it, but it's serious. One more question on that. Annie Jacobson's book, Phenomena, she talked about a study that Gary Nolan and uh, Kit Green and uh, some other people are working on. Is that the study you're talking about? I'm trying to think of how I answer this. Um, well, I'm, I'm familiar with that. I'll put it that way. I'm familiar with that. Okay. But, uh, Annie Jacobson uh, writes in a section, and Hal Putoff and Kit Green have uh, sort of communicated with us a little bit about this, that where they had some kind of intense research with UFO artifacts or bodies or something, that there could be scientists who then couldn't sleep, had nightmares, had physical uh, disabilities in the presence of where they were studying remote viewing, UFO, and so forth. And this is what you mean that is disturbing, right? Yeah, that's part of it. Uh, I'll, I'll take it a little step further. Is um, Some of the research that was done by the Bass organization ended up at Skinwalker Ranch, which I've written about. Uh, they were on the ranch for uh, off and on for three years. Now, this is after NIDS was there, after the NIDS study basically shut down. It was after the book came out. Uh, these guys, uh, teams of people went back there, 
including some really tough customers who uh, can can take care of themselves. And those people are the ones that had the most uh, dramatic effects. Uh, things that they encountered there followed them and have had uh, lasting effects on the people who were on the property as well as uh, their families. All negative, ongoing. all negative, George? Yeah, pretty, pretty bad stuff. Okay, and that is also part of the confusion. It's like the pink elephant in the room in all of this, from the New York Times to Luis Elizondo being ahead of that threat program for uh, seven, 2007 to 2012, because you and I and Stanton Friedman and a bunch of us know that from World War II on at least, that the Truman administration was working behind the scenes, retrieving bodies, retrieving craft, uh, putting a live uh, being allegedly in Los Alamos National Laboratory, that there is a 70-year series of layers underneath what happened December 16th, and that it is a bit confusing that we know that this has been ongoing and big and black and Area 51 and China Lake and all of it has been involved with the investigations of the storage of material over these 70 years. December 16th wasn't the beginning. It was the first step for the DOD to officially show really important infrared uh, jet camera gun uh, camera uh, footage. And in the New York Times article, when it talks about how uh, the the majority of Harry Reid's getting that $22 million allocated for the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, that it did go to Bigelow Aerospace. And on May 28th this year, it was Robert Bigelow on CBS's 60 Minutes who said, quote, I am absolutely convinced that aliens exist. The alien presence is just like right under people's noses, close quote. Can you yeah. frame this for everybody in the sense that this is not just beginning? This is a huge, huge story with many parts from Skinwalker Ranch to Area 51, and that maybe you can flesh out what you know that Robert Bigelow knows and what was behind these comments. Well, I'm I'm not going to speak for Mr. Bigelow. I'm going to, I'm I'll I'll phrase it this way: is that uh, he spent more money, put more of his own resources into trying to resolve this mystery than any person in the history of the world. Millions and millions of dollars uh, that he put into research, helping uh, independent researchers, creating NIDs, buying the ranch, not just that ranch, but other properties as well, having uh, personnel on these facilities for years around the clock. It's a lot of money that he's put into it, he stopped. Uh, after the Bass thing ended, he stopped. And I suspect that uh, it's because, uh, well, two reasons. One is because his aerospace uh, company and venture takes all of his time, and he really needs to focus on that. But I also believe that his curiosity has been satisfied, I'll put it that way, that the, the questions that he wanted to know most intensely have been answered. You can George, read into that what you want. Yeah. George, I, I do want to read into that, okay? Is he looking for the technology to get us to the stars? And what I mean by that is warp drive the through terahertz radiation. Is that what he's either figured out or got another information for a scientist to work on? No, it's not what he's looking for, but it is what the Bass Project was looking for. You'll recall, John, you were one of the only people that recognized the significance of something that Bob said on, on Coast to Coast uh, when I hosted it. It was actually, it was 10 days after the contract with uh, the DIA had been signed. He was on the air with us, and he mentioned that he'd created this Bass organization, and it was one of the intentions was to figure out how these things work and to go to the stars. And he also commented that uh, along the way, uh, he mentioned that he had a partner. I mean, the, the signposts, the breadcrumbs have been there for anybody who wanted to pay attention to it. He was saying loud and clear that he was in partnership with the government right from uh, the month that he signed the contract. 
later right. when the FAA announced that all of its uh, – all UFO reports that come into the government are sent to Bigelow Aerospace, that should have been a pretty big red, red flag as well that, that told you that Bob Bigelow was working with government entities to figure this stuff out. Whatever was developed, whatever reports were developed uh, by Bass under this contract – are, are actually government property. Now, they're, they may be in the possession of uh, a private entity, uh, but they're government property, and he can't release any of that material. He can't use it. He's, if, if there are technological secrets that have been uncovered, they're not his proprietary uh, materials. They belong to the U.S. government. But I think the lar- in the larger picture, um, this is part of a uh, sort of running a, a flag up the pole and see how the public reacts. I would urge people to be patient with this. And that, you know, now that the, the cat's sort of out of the bag, there's a, a, a tendency on among all of us, me too, hey, let's hear the rest of it. Come on, spill the, spill the secrets. That's not going to happen. There's not going to be disclosure. There, uh, there's not going to be some, here, open up the doors at Area 51 and come on in and here's the saucers kick the tires. But this is an encouraging thing. Let's 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 give them a little bit of room here, so people don't freak out to see how this plays out. Uh, there has already been pushback, and I'm sure you've seen the articles. People who question whether 22 million dollars should have been spent on this. 22 million dollars in Pentagon terms is like an expensive lunch. Right. 22 million dollars over five years is nothing for the kind of uh, program this should be. It should be many times that amount. I mean, we're talking about unidentified craft displaying technological superiority over our best warcraft playing cat and mouse planes that become uh, aircraft that become invisible that can accelerate out of sight in an instant that do things that we only dream we could do they fly over our nuclear facilities they mess with our warplanes our warships our nuclear carriers they come and go at their will over in our airspace that's a serious matter we need to figure out how it works and who they are I think we're closer, as Luis Elizondo has said, we're closer to understanding the technology. Not that we've duplicated it, but that we understand how it works. Now the the challenge is to try to build it ourselves, because if we don't get it, as Senator Reid told me, the Chinese and the Russians almost certainly are working on it, and maybe these revelations from uh, the last couple of uh, uh, days have uh, lit a fire under them to go ahead and get serious, because now it appears the Americans are getting serious. But, George, isn't this sort of a confusing schizophrenia because we've had whistleblowers for over at points in the last 70 years talking about huge black budget programs that have been underground at Area 51 and China Lake and Wright Pad and on and on, and that they – that there's been a lot of money that has been allocated to back engineering and studying the various types of intelligences. And so this is like drawing an artificial line in the history of all of this, December 16th, 2017, that at least there's DOD officially backed infrared that is showing this extraordinary phenomena But isn't it true, even from your own work about Area 51 and beyond, that we have huge black programs underground, undersea, everywhere related to extraterrestrial biological entities or other dimensions or time travel? Well, I know we have programs and we put a lot of money into that. And I don't know that it's extraterrestrial biological entities. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure who exactly knows that. I also suspect that the programs that exist, what materials exist, are not in the hands of the government. They're somewhere else. There's, there's a, a, a buffer there. They're in, in private hands or foreign hands as opposed to government warehouses. I don't think they're in government control. And, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of money uh, spent on this kind of stuff. I don't think all those secrets are going to come spelling out right now, but this is sort of a test to see – how the public goes. There are people inside government now who are freaking out about this, who are opposed to the release of the information, not necessarily because they worry about the public going crazy, buying guns and and blowing up uh, all social institutions. That might be a a concern, but because they, they worry about their own culpability, about the lies that they have told, about money that's been stashed, 
into secret programs that should have gone to something else about the taxpayers getting outraged. There are also people inside. This is Harry Reid told me in the story we aired last night. There was opposition to this study. This study would have gone on, but it was opposed by a cadre of religious fundamentalists spread out in the intelligence community, had their own little network who are opposed to this because they feel it's satanic, that researching UFOs on possible aliens would, would be an open invitation to the devil. Now, I'm serious about that. And to have that kind of uh, factor to decide, uh, be a decisive factor in whether or not we spend money to study UFOs that are intruding in our airspace and messing with our military is just crazy. There are a range of, of uh, motives for why people don't want this to happen. Some are worried that they're going to go to jail. Some are worried that it's the devil. Some, some just don't want the public to know, or they've got friends in industry, or they're worried that the Russians and the Chinese might find out what we're up to. There's a range of, of reasons, but we're seeing some of that pushback. Senator Reid's being attacked for uh, the boondoggle benefits that he gives to his pal Bob Bigelow, which is ridiculous. Right. It's ridiculous. The amount of money here, Bob Bigelow is a billionaire. He, it, this cost him money. This, this effort cost him money. He was willing to house it because he's interested in the topic, but this is not some big money maker. Why do you think that Dr. Hal Putoff is being attacked in this pushback? Well, you notice that the attack on Hal uh, Putoff came from Julian Assange. We know uh, from related activities, WikiLeaks, Trump stuff, uh, where his loyalties lie and who's pulling his strings. I suspect that the Russians don't want Hal Putoff to succeed or Tom DeLonge to succeed or Lou Elizondo to come forward with more revelations or, or a Bass-like study to, to get kicked off once again because they've got their own um, materials, their own research efforts going on, on, on. So belittling Hal, calling him a Scientologist and making fun of Uri Geller, that's, just, uh, that's par for the course for Assange and, and people like that who – Answer to another master. George, tidbits. You said, you know, people miss the fact that, that the contract was signed. One of the things that I picked up and I'm curious about, and I'm curious to know if you know anything about it within this project, there's a race to the moon and Mars again. And one of the people involved came out and said that we're going to try to colonize Mars and we might have to do some mining up there. Does this have to do with there might be something up on Mars that would lead to what we needed to go to the stars. Uh, they're, that's, that's outside my range. I don't know the answer to that one. What is it that Bob Bigelow, do you think, is speculation, has been uh, informed about in terms of the type of intelligence and whether or not it's ally, enemy, neutral, or what are the agendas here? Yeah, I, I can't answer that. You know, I've I've had a lot of conversations with Bob Bigelow over the years, and most of them are sort of private. And and um, and it, the reason he continues to to trust me is because I haven't uh, violated his confidence. So I I can't answer that. I hope that we get answers to it. And and if I get uh, if I get the green light to talk about it, I will. But I don't have it right now. Well, so. Tom DeLong has suggested that there could be a potential threat, and that the next release soon would be about something that may be potentially dangerous. Well, I think there is inherent danger in this. The technology that's been demonstrated, if it were used against us in a hostile way, is uh, is bad. There are consequences for humans who come into contact with whatever these things are, and, and sometimes the consequences are, are very bad. Um, so there are there are risks. I would also say, though, that, look, uh, the, the overall um, – the overall reaction of this technology, whoever controls it, has not been hostile. They have not attacked us. They're not blowing up cities. Uh, they interact with us at, at their will. They let us see them uh, when they want. They appear to us uh, in different guises at different times and, and give us glimpses of other realities, if I can borrow a phrase from a friend of mine's book. Um, <laughs> and it, they're, they're the ones that have called the shots. Um, so I, I hope that they are willing, whoever they are, are willing to go along with us knowing more about our place in the universe. But, you know, we're going to have to be patient and wait and see. It's a very exciting time. Yes. Uh, but 
but I think we need to be patient with and see how this plays out. Well, I hope that you. my media brethren will stick with it. Well, thank you so much for being on Phenomenon today. And I hope as 2018 unfolds, George, that we can have you back several times as things keep breaking because you're one of the people who is close to the heartbeat. And I can't thank you enough for being here today. Thank you both. Talk to you again. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, George. You know, John, while I was listening to George, what was running in the back of my mind is that part of the big issue of technology they are laying out in the front page of the New York Times that pilots have watched documented craft that were doing what the New York Times article says are maneuvers that are incomprehensible to modern physics on this planet. And in that context, I am thinking about the Ministry of Defense having still withheld those three policy files, whatever is in them, from your getting them to admit that they had had 18, they have sort of released some of them, heavily redacted, some still held off for 20 or 30 years. But there was a promise, right, They allegedly, that they were going to release the final three policy files in 2018, what do you think they are going to do and what could be in those policy files? Well, you have to look at it from this standpoint. UAP was introduced by Hillary Clinton during the uh, election cycle. Podesta seemed to be behind that because that group was pushing the UAP stuff. It's been vaguely hinted at now in some of these releases and talked about. The British government has remained silent other than Nick Pope coming out and starting to talk a little bit more about this and how this all ties into it. So yes, I believe that the 15 files that weren't digitized and almost impossible to view, maybe they'll end up making them public. And number two, the last three files on policy are gonna have to do with the fact of what the MOD, how they reviewed it, what they felt about it, what their policy was towards it. So you have to believe that that's part of the reason why all these files have been held back. And if you look at Grant Cameron's assumption on what's going on and some other people that this is being controlled by the government itself, then they would probably go hand in hand with the American government having the first shot, the British government coming back next with the second part of it saying, yeah, we've done a study, Condine's there. Nick made a comment that that what off of Leslie King, which Grant brought out that she's gonna be the lead on this, where she came back and said, which was interesting because she brought content into this was, see, I told you I was right. These studies that are going on have to do inside that were redacted inside the, the report was they came back and said, yes, the American government and even the Russian government were involved in this. So yeah, I think the next salvo is gonna be, besides the other stuff we've talked about with George and we'll end up talking with Grant, um, is the fact that, yeah, the, the second bombshell is gonna drop is they're gonna go into more detail and they'll declassify more stuff within Project Condine and these MOD files. Which then would set up using Rendlesham, yeah, the RAF Bant Waters Woodbridge incident in December of 1980 that you were the only person engulfed in light twice, it would set it up as the big military interaction with the unidentified aerial phenomena of the DI-55 Project Condine report to begin to interface with the public and hopefully confirm this was all real, that there were many people involved in the 72 hours in uh, the Rendlesham Forest, including yourself, and that all of the pieces, technology that is incomprehensible to us, and impact through terahertz frequencies with human minds and bodies can manipulate human minds and can damage human bodies. Well, correct. And that's what I was trying to hint at about how the study is ongoing. They're working on it. And a lot of the incidents that have taken place with some of the people that are involved in this study are still classified. But in our particular incident, it's not, number one, and there's a lot of support behind the incident to top it all off that in the Condine report of the only incident they talked about was Bellwaters 
but that the fact that we were out there and we were exposed to this UAP radiation, which has now been identified as terrorists. So yes, and yeah, I believe that Rendlesham will end up being involved in this when they come out with more on the experiencer stuff and the studies and where this is taking us. And do you think that Grant's, uh, Cameron and others' suggestion that at the, I'll call it at the bottom of the phenomena, that it involves possibly one or more other dimensions and that where the whole terahertz frequency and technology may be hung up is needing a portal technology that would move us from this matter world dimension to another dimension if we were to get to the actual source of the phenomena interacting with our planet? Well, I just keep it simple for now. The what they're probably trying to develop will have to do with interstellar travel, and that itself probably would create that effect. I mean, the only thing out there now, there's some papers written by Hal put off and some physicists on this, but you have to kind of comprehend it. The best way I can put this is the Star Trek when the ship goes into warp drive, it goes into a different level. So, my take would be yes. They're working on this technology that may be interwoven as far as being able to open the portal and be able to travel in the portal with the ship and, and people. And after this coming break, we are going to be talking with Grant Cameron, who has been for the last year or so interacting with people who have had some association with the Central Intelligence Agency who claim that the key to the intelligence, what has been called the alien presence on this planet, is in fact from another dimension and that they have firsthand knowledge about portals. And just before this break, one thing that I have been told in the last two years is that one of the keys that our government has been hiding is that in our solar system is one of the major portals that hooks into other places in the Milky Way galaxy, and that this would be why Earth and Mars and this solar system might have a long-term interaction or relationship with intelligences out there that we have yet to meet face to face, but have manipulated and terraformed in our solar system, perhaps for millions of years because of a portal connection. This 50 minute uninterrupted segment of Phenomenon Radio Live exclusively on KGRA Radio is brought to you by OnlineVibes.com. Your personal connection to mind, body and spirit committed to help connecting you with healing modalities that can manifest a true and healthy change in your life. Visit the website at onlinevibes.com. That's online, V-I-B-E-Z.com. Between now and January 1st, use promo code GIFT to get 25% off of your order. Well, that wraps up the first hour of tonight's interview with George Knapp. Grant Cameron is on deck next for hour number two. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with Phenomenon Radio Live after these messages. Listening to the KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. As you know, recently we've been dealing with many natural disasters, and a lot of people have lost contact with their loved ones for days, even weeks. Others in the most vulnerable moments were unable to contact emergency services and call for help because of these potentially life-threatening circumstances from hurricanes, fires, earthquakes, and even rogue nations such as North Korea. Satellite Phone Store made satellite phones an affordable solution 
to being prepared when all communications are cut off. Satellite phones don't rely on cell phone towers, and they work anywhere under the open sky. Satellite Phone Store will give you a free Inmarsat iSat Phone 2 satellite phone with a monthly subscription on select service plans with enough time to provide you with reliable communications between your family and emergency services when you need it the most. To learn more, call 877-705-8839 or go to SatellitePhoneStore.com. Supplies are limited, so call today, 877-705-8839 to hear all options and stay prepared. I'm getting older and noticing that my body just doesn't work as well as it used to. So I like to keep fit as possible by hitting the gym a few times a week. Recently, I started having a nagging bicep pain and it got so bad I couldn't even lift the weights. When I was complaining about it to a friend, he told me about Angioprim. He said chelation helps remove toxins, heavy metals, and cholesterol in veins and arteries that may cause blockages. You know, after just one week of taking Angioprim, the pain was gone and now I'm back in the gym full strength. Scientific research proves the active ingredient in angioprim has superior oral chelation action that helps promote cardiovascular health. So to learn more, go to angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or talk to a trained consultant. Call angioprim toll-free at 877-882-7221. You'll feel better with more energy. Call 877-882-7221. Or go to the website, angioprim.com. Do you worry a lot? If you're forgetful, nervous, moody, or overwhelmed, chances are you're not protecting yourself from the ravaging effects of stress and anxiety. No matter the cause, ongoing stress and elevated levels of the stress hormone cortisol can rob your memory, your health, your quality of life, and your future. Now you can combat the effects of stress and anxiety while improving your memory and recall at the same time with the dietary supplement Calm and Clever. Studies show that the ingredients in Calm and Clever reduce cortisol by as much as 30% in as little as one to two weeks and increase your ability to recall facts, names, and numbers in four to 12 weeks. Calm and Clever was created by scientist Kurt Hendricks, a principal investigator in two NIH-funded studies on Alzheimer's disease. Try Calm and Clever for two months. You'll feel the difference. Call 1-800-758-8746 or go to calmandclever.com. Hi guys, this is AJ with Vibes Mind Body Spirit. The hustle and bustle of the holidays are fast approaching and the Vibes Tribe is ready to assist you in making your holidays merry and bright. Illuminate your space by shopping onlinevibes.com and browse our wide selection of handmade soy-based candles infused with crystals and essential oils. You can prep and clear your space before and after family festivities with sage, palo santo, and our own in-house incense resin blend. From now through January 1st, use the promo code GIFT at checkout and then receive 25% off any online purchase. Beat that rush and shop onlinevibes.com and stuff your stockings with thoughtful gifts for all of your loved ones to make this holiday season the most meaningful one yet. Visit onlinevibes.com. That's online, V-I-B-E-Z dot com today. Hi, folks. Let's wind the clocks back 60 years. Food was different. Food provided health and nutrition, and using supplements was minimal. Unfortunately, now we have chemicals, GMOs, herbicides, and pesticides that can be quite lethal in the name of our food supply and, of course, the ever-loving dollar. Supplementing our diets can be very important to stay healthy. Cleansing from daily intruders to the body might be critical. Live strong and take charge. Log on to GetTheTea.com. Our herbal tea is a great way to cleanse from intruders. Our supplements is a great way to maintain and improve your health. When your health is not up to par, go to GetTheTea.com. No GMOs, no fillers, and organic. And very helpful in keeping you at the top of your game. Life is too short to feel, uh, you know what I mean. Stay in the game, at the top of your game, with GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Again, GetTheTea.com. For the thousands of wounded warriors returning from battle, Wounded Warrior Project has developed the Warriors to Work program. 
a career counseling service that helps wounded warriors translate their military experience to a civilian job. These extraordinary men and women bring more than just teamwork and inspiration to the workplace. They bring proven world-class job skills. And to ensure proper placement, Wounded Warrior Project works with employers to find just the right job fit. Talented, skilled, and eager to get back to work, you have the opportunity to hire a seasoned veteran. Contact Wounded Warrior Project at findwwp.org. Welcome home, the brave. Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com.